broadcast today. We hope that the Lord speaks something special to you on the day and that you receive it with your whole heart. Absolutely. I am super excited about what God is saying in this season and I promise you that if you will just give your undivided attention, God will bless you even right now in the midst of difficulty. Take care and always remember if you be good to God, he'll be good to you. Uh, this week has been a tremendous week, a uh, wonderful week. Uh, my debut CD is back in demand. You got to inbox me and get this. It'll bless you. It's entitled This Season. Um, the songs that you've been hearing me do sometimes live, rise above it all this season. Hey Amen. It's been a blessing to some. And I've been um, uh, the recipient of divine favor. So we're looking to uh, put that back out and redistribute it with the help of Ken Brooks. Hey Amen. We're going to go ahead and do what God says to do in this season. And I'm excited about what he is saying uh, in this season. Not only that, but you have joined us here live. We thank the woman of God for an awesome intercessory prayer on this morning. And she's really ushered us into what uh, we were going to discuss on this morning about getting into the presence of God. Getting into the presence of God. Okay. And so with that being said, I just want to encourage you to ramp up your prayer life. Amen. I, on this morning, uh, for those of you who are in our group, I said this morning that God had been dealing with me, amen, about uh, this is the season of urgency. You've got to have a sense of urgency. And he's doing great things. But the question is, amen, what are you going to do to get it? Amen. And so uh, we just got to revamp everything that God is saying and doing in this season, amen, and let it work for our good instead of working against him. Amen. And so while we wait for others to come on for this worship and word, Amen. Encounter. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus over everybody who's out there on this morning. Be safe. Amen. And we're just still praying for your healing. If you're dealing with this COVID issue, we're praying for your healing in this season. In this season, we thank the woman of God for an awesome prayer. Elder Tamika Starks she never ceases to amaze me. Thank you. I love you dearly. We appreciate you, my wife. Thank God for a praying woman. Amen. For those of you who are in SBC land, Springfield Baptist Church, we praise God for you as you're coming on this morning. Come on. Amen. Come on. And we thank God for you. If you're joining us and you're not a part of this ministry, we encourage you to get in a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-based ministry. Amen. That can help you receive what God has for you. If you don't have one, we'd love to have you, whether it be in the Sabbath sanctuary or physically when he releases us to go back in. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Let's go ahead and jump on and get started in the book of John, the fifth chapter, the first through the sixth verse. John, the fifth chapter, the first through the sixth verse. And I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version. John, the fifth chapter, the first through the sixth verse. It says, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, the pool, which in Aramaic language is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded or covered by five colonnades or porches. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid. For 38 years, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And I just want to talk very briefly from the topic, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? 
going to attempt to sing this hymn a little bit hymn but never really sung it before hope it blesses somebody here on today amen great is thy faithfulness oh god my father there is no shadow of turning with
in a brand new car. You get the picture. But this man watched for 38 years and watching other people get healed. And I don't care how well you preach, pray, or prophesy. That has got to mess with your mind on some level. What do you do when you thought it was your turn? Can you still worship God? Can you still lift your hands? Better yet, can you still offer up a praise? Or is your relationship with God contingent upon your circumstance? And I declare and decree to you, it's easy to worship at the beginning or the end of a thing. But what you do in the middle is what determines what God can do for you long term. Can anybody worship him in the middle of the day? Go ahead and ask yourself right there. Go ahead and take self-inventory. Can anybody worship in the middle of drama? Can anybody worship in the middle of confusion? Can you worship him in the middle of your trials? Can you worship him in the middle of your troubles? Can you worship him in the middle of depression? Can you worship him in the middle of stress? Can you give God glory in the middle of a thunderstorm? I submit to you today that the sun might not be shining on the outside. The S-O-N, the S-U-N that is. But the S-O-N is shining on the inside. Understand this. What brings breakthrough is aggressive worship. Let me let that sit right there. What brings breakthrough is aggressive worship. We assume that because society and culture has changed, perhaps God has changed. And I don't want to bust your bubble here, but God ain't changed. If you're looking for God, why don't you look for him when you left him? God has not changed. Perhaps you're the one that changed. But I'm going to drop this in your spirit for free. If you don't want to praise God, the rocks going to cry out. If you don't want to praise God, the trees gonna cry out. If you don't want to praise God, somebody else gonna give God some glory. Because God wants you to come out from your comfortable place and say, I'm coming after you. Can anybody just tell God, I'm chasing after you. Ain't gonna let them get in my way. I'm chasing after you. So the question becomes, how bad do you want it? What does the man in this condition for 38 years, I want about. Here I am stuck and such and such got my breakthrough. Here I am laying here with it and hope but somebody else got my blessing. Every time I try to get up, somebody get in front of me. But he didn't say oh, do you want to let me get up? He said no, do you want to be made whole? In other words what was getting ready to, to keep you down, I need you to get up and get about your business. Here I and somebody else got my breakthrough. After 38 years, you might start doubting a little bit. There are those who've been waiting for less time and still have doubts. Somebody been stuck for a year. Somebody been stuck for five years. Somebody been mentally in prison for 50 years. But ask yourself honestly, can you be passionate and committed before your breakthrough even get here? sit right there in your mind. In other words, can you give God glory? And bless it yet. I can't speak for nobody else, but I love how to praise God on credit. I ain't got it yet, but I know it's on the way. Do I have anybody to learn how to praise God on layaway? You put it in store, and here you are waiting to get it out, but it just ain't your time yet. But God said, if you would just give me glory, I'll activate in the heavenly realm what you desire in the are y'all going to talk to me here? Because God is looking for somebody who will say, Lord, if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough for me. Lord, if you never do it, I'll still worship you. Even though I'm stuck, I'll still worship you. Even though I'm lonely, I'll still worship you. Even though I'm broke, I'll still worship you. Saying you ain't going to keep me from getting my miracle. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate everything I've ever been through. I appreciate the hard times. I appreciate every trouble I've had to endure. Thank you, God, for being right there by my side. You're developing my character. And God wants somebody to understand. I know how bad you want it, but do you want me more? I know how bad you want the house, but do you want me more? I know how bad you want that car, but do you want me more? You want that individual? But do you want me more? Can somebody just scream right now in your own house? God, I want more of you. If I freed you, God's hand, if I freed you from your symptom, you will never be free from the 
Jesus and get in the presence of God. God wants to tell the truth about where we come from. We got to tell folk how it happened. We got to tell folk when it happened. You got to tell folk if it had not been for the Lord. Oh, my soul. I would have lost my mind a long time ago. You got to tell folk, have you not had prayer warriors around you? That you would have been in a crazy position.
He knows worship unlocks the blessing. But God is looking for an uncommon passion. The place of uncommon passion could be at your house. It could be in your kitchen. It could be in your bed. Come on, talk to me here. It could be in your bathroom. Take your praise and your passion. Combine it into one and give God glory. And watch this. I don't want to shock you, but I got to let you know this. If you're only praising God at church, then you are missing out. God wakes up John early in the morning. Amen. And some know that God has been stirring at you a certain time. Prove to God, I want more of you than anything else. I want you more than being popular. I want you more than being liked. I want you more than being desired. God, if I have to give you everything I need, I want more of you. I believe it's time for me to go and get out of here. But after John picks up his bed, he called out for doing so on the Sabbath. And I came to declare on today that God will hit you with miracles and you won't even know where they came from. And God will do things that will blow your mind. That's why it's called faith. And God is asking us who are learned and who are educated. You've been in the church all your life. You move from the sunbeam choir up from the choir to the praise team. God is saying right now, I want you to lay all that aside for the moment and I want you to get back to your first love. I want you to come to me as a little child and say, God, trust you for everything that I need. But Jesus told the man, don't sin no more. Let something worse happen to you the next time. He healed the symptom and then came back and got the root. Some of y'all missed that here. If Jesus had been religious, he would have called him a sinner first. But Jesus covered him with grace then came back and said, let me tell you how you got and that's what God is saying to us today. He said, I ain't going to call you out openly for the stuff that you've been doing. But let me tell you like this, how you got stuck in the first place. It all boils down to your loyalty and your commitment. How bad, how bad do you want it? People think that you're stuck and that you are paralyzed and that's your problem but no, no, no sin sin is your problem but oh, I thank God that Jesus can rinse me off and clean me at the same time do I have any hymn singers here the hymn writer said why can't wash away my sin Nothing but the blood of Jesus What can make me whole, whole again Not then, yes, not then Nothing but the blood of Jesus How bad do you want it? I said, how bad do you want it? I can't go get it for you You got to get it for yourself I'm asking you right now, man to man, mano y mano, man to woman, man to child, man to family, man to man, preacher, 
I can't want it for you. You got to want it for yourself. I want to pray for you today. Lord, we thank you for everything you're doing in this season and what you're continuing to do. You said that you come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And right now, God, we desire that life because we want more from you. Thank you, God, for being a good God. Thank you for being a doctor who has never lost a patient. Thank you for being a lawyer who has never lost a case. We appreciate you. We love you. And we thank you. And now that we want it bad enough to go get it, we pray that you will guide our footsteps and order our steps in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. I got to get out of here. I got to leave you today. But I want to say this before I leave. Amen. Don't let them catch you. Like the old saints used to say, with your work undone, you got to get up and go get it. I don't care what it costs you. I don't care how tired you are. I don't care about none of that. You got to get up and go get it. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast on today. Our giving options are for love. That's right. Give it and shall be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, and running over. Sow a seed on the word that was given on today. And watch the Lord bless your life. Until then, you be blessed and take care.